Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in uh, to our second Finale Developer Roundtable. I'm Dan from Make Music, I'm joined here virtually by three of our Finale devs. Uh, why don't we just take a moment to start us off? Let's go around and uh, introduce yourself, who you are, what your role is here. Um, mate, since we're all virtual now, what state are you working in from? Are you uh, telecommuting from and just how long you've been with Finale or using Finale uh, as a composer or a musician? Uh, why don't you start us off, Chris? Sounds good. Uh, yeah, my name's Chris Cianfalone. I've been with uh, a senior software engineer here at Make Music and uh, working at an undisclosed location from Minnesota. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I've been with the company, boy, 28 years uh, with the company. It's been, it's been an exciting ride and just to see all the things happening in the finale world. Uh, um, if I can tell a short story about uh, my, my use or me, my background with using Finale, uh, you know, I was kind of raised in a musical family. Mom and dad both were educators. Uh, they also were professional gigging musicians. Had a, they had a wedding band growing up, so I played keyboard bass in the group at a really young age. And, uh, well, and, um, and my dad was really into music tech as well. And uh, um, happy birthday, dad, by the way. He's got a birthday coming up in the next couple of days here. Um, yeah, he, we, we owned one of the first MIDI keyboards. Um, a lot of people are always surprised when they hear my first sequencing software that I used was not on a Macintosh. It was actually Dr. T's software on an IBM uh, XT uh, or AT, I can't remember now. But uh, um, then, then one day my dad went to this uh, uh, event and he's like, oh, you had to see this software. It was so cool. They not only were recording off the keyboard, but it would actually show you the music on the screen afterwards. And Later on, I found out that I think he went to some event that was being hosted uh, to show off. I believe it was Finale 1.0 at the time, maybe at Prince's Music Studio even at, at the time. Um, so needless to say, uh, that was pretty revolutionary at the time. And as they say, the rest is history. But uh, um, I did not actually use Finale a whole lot in the 1.0 days. Um, I think in my college days, I was probably using Finale 2.5. Uh, uh, not Finale 25. That, that's actually 2.5. 2. Uh, <laughs> And uh, been using it ever since then. Um, you know, I've used it for writing horn charts back when I was gigging with groups. I used it just for personal projects. Uh, I use it with my worship team at church. Uh, just, just a lot of variety of different things I've used it for. So, uh, um, and I thought I'd show for some of those old timers. Uh, this, this was, uh, let's see if we can see it. This was uh, jokingly known as Finale's uh, copy protection back in the day. You needed these manuals to figure out how to use use Finale back in those days, but we hope we hope uh, we're much more user friendly now. So, uh, um, yeah, that's 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 my story with Finale. <laughs> awesome. Uh, how about Greg? Yeah, uh, my name is Greg Angel. I'm, I am a Finale test engineer, and I am working from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I'll give a similar background to what Chris just said. Um, in 1988, I was a sophomore composition major, and one of the faculty members had a seminar, gave a demo of 1.0 finale. And we were all packed in this tiny room around a nine inch Mac Plus going, oh my God, <laughs> you know? And um, I think a few weeks later, I went and bought a copy of it for myself. And by the time of my senior recital, um, I had two or so pieces that I did all on Finale 1.0 with a dot matrix printer and thought it was just the pinnacle of technology at the time. It was amazing um, how far we've come, right, <laughs> since those days. But uh, after grad school, um, I moved to here to Minneapolis and uh, where at that time Coda Music Technology was located and I got a job with them. Started in tech support and gradually moved up the ladder. Um, I've tried to quit several times <laughs> to, to focus on just, just, just performing. And we finally came to a, a mutually beneficial agreement where I work uh, between half time and, and three quarters time and gig the rest of the time. Um, of course, the last year and a half, that's been <laughs> a lot less gigs and a lot more time sitting here with uh, this wonderful team. Um, so yeah, so I've been with Coda since 1996, I think it was. Yeah, so a long, a long time with a couple small gaps. I think that's it. And Mark. Yeah, um, so I'm Mark Green, um, also a senior software engineer with the team um, uh, here in Colorado, um, just not in the office today. And um, let's see, um, 
years with the company. I've, I've been with the company about five and a half years now, almost going on six. Um, and I've, sorry to say it, have only been using Finale for five and a half years. Um, I was using a competitor's product before that. And uh, once I started using Finale, I realized there was no going back. Finale was so much better and so much more versatile and could really allow us to do whatever we needed. Um, you know, uh, my experience with uh, music is pretty long and extensive. I've been, you know, singing in choirs. I play piano, I play harp, I act in musicals, things along those lines. And, um, you know, my um, software career has seen me do things like uh, Easy CD Creator and Windows Media Player and things along those lines for various things. So I've got, I've got some experience with the, the whole media uh, and, and um, you know, audiovisual type stuff uh, and some graphics things. So that's where, that's where my skill set comes in with the team. Awesome. Thanks so much uh, for our brief introductions. It's really great to kind of hear the different backgrounds and um, you know, places everyone came from. Um, so today we are talking about Smooful, everything Smooful. Um, I guess to start us off, could uh, you just tell us what is Smooful? Is that the actual pronunciation for it? What does it stand for? Uh, Greg, you want to start us off with that? Sure. I mean, you will hear us say Smooful, and that's just, I don't know how we landed on that. It's a thing you see written more than you see here said. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does stand for Standard Music Font Layout. So one could argue that it could be Smooful if you want to get the music part in there. But we say Smooful, and I think that's fine. Um, uh, and what Smoofle is, is a, it's a modern font technology um, that offers many more capabilities than the old style fonts we had been using. For a true font nerd, you know, it's a Unicode open type font for all the things that that brings along with it. But, you know, I think um, the important part of the acronym is the standard, uh, the standard part. And if you want to draw a crude analogy between a music font and a text font, it would be as if Times New Roman and Helvetica you typed A and you got a different character in those two fonts. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've lived our entire life, right? If a font was designed for Finale, it worked, but it wouldn't work in other music software necessarily and vice versa. The idea of the standard is that one font to rule them all, any program that supports Smoothful, it's just gonna work. Also benefit for font designers, they can build the font one time and have it deployed across all the products instead of having to make a Finale flavor and a flavor for each other uh, notation package. Um, so that's a short introduction of what Smoothle is. It's been around, what, about seven years, I think, or, or so in, in develop. We're on a version four now of the specification. So it's it's a standard that is growing in, in, in acceptance and continues to get better and better. Awesome. And so how would we say that kind of fits into, um, you know, the larger finale notation landscape? Yeah, I, th I think that's a... You know, like with all these standards, it's, it's an acknowledgement that, uh, you know, Finale does fit into these larger landscapes. And, and if you look at kind of the history of Finale, I think we've always tried to uh, support standards, uh, you know, whether it's VSTs, audio units, um, MIDI support way back in the day, uh, uh, more recently music XML support, uh, uh, things like that. Uh, so, yeah, this uh, in some ways smoothful maybe Smoothful has hit Finale the hardest just because this really targets Finale at its at its core in terms of what it what it does so that you know it's been a long road getting here um some some might recognize the name Mark Adler uh, uh he made a lot of uh contributions I, I know he was on the original like Smoothful mailing list uh uh I was on them as well but I just I just kind of followed as a as a as an onlooker but uh yeah Mark did a lot of a lot of uh contributions there and of course he uh worked on our fonts, which, you know, you're only seeing them in 27, but I know it's been a long, some of those things were birthed many years prior to that. So uh, um, uh, just thank you to Mark for the great work he did on the fonts. So um, I think one thing that's cool too, as we worked on, on this support, um, you know, we didn't, this could have been a really bumpy road. <laughs> um, the fact that you can have start your document as Smoothful and do all Smoothful, but you can still maintain support of all your old files and they're going to work just fine in non Smoothful land. And you can even set up a doc to use both if you like. So oh. I think it's been a, I think it's been a good start. And of course we've got uh, plans for more, more support throughout the 27 dot, dot cycle. Awesome. Anybody else? Uh, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, I, I think it's important that we recognize that, you know, Finale is only one tool in people's toolboxes, you know, and they need these standards to work across the tools. Like if we didn't have MIDI, how would you go back and forth? And uh, it's similar with fonts and music XML, we need, we don't want to wall you in. We want to give you the tool you need to do your job. And if you need to get outside for a second for another tool, we want you to be able to do that easily. So that's why standards matter. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, thanks for just kind of the background and, and um, walking us through Smoofle. Uh, we did get some user submitted questions through our forums that we post on social media over the last week. Um, so let's jump into some of those. So um, I guess one of the first questions, and we see this a lot, is why why Smoofle? Um, it, it sounds like it was a, a lot of work. It was a heavy lift to get it in um, to Finale. Um, so why why prioritize Smoofle over other but uh, uh, other new features or other fixes or things um, in B27. Yeah, I'm very sympathetic to the argument with any release of, you know, why this and not that. That's always the thing, right? Like, I wanted this and you gave me that. I don't need that. Um, but I think, as we just talked about, um, staying modern is important, you know, and we wanted to do school for a long time. And we kind of postponed it a few times because it was such a big lift and we finally the time was ripe and we needed to go ahead and do it because like we said standards are important staying modern is important mm -hmm. but if we want to drill down further into you know what does it mean to the average user who doesn't care about you know font technology um you know i, I think there's a lot of ways it'll it'll it, it can hit uh, one thing is you know you've got all the symbols in one font now. You used to have to go digging around for a symbol between four different fonts because each font could only have 256 characters. Now you got 4,000 characters in one font. You've got a home for everything you need in one font. And better yet, that's gonna be the same should you change from that font to some other Spoofle font. You can, they'll all be in the same spot. They'll have a slightly different look or flavor, but same character. You know, it's still a treble clef, this looks a little different now. So that's great. And I think, the other big um, it is with all those characters, we now have categories and it's searchable. Like you, you want to go, you're setting up some artificial harmonics and you have diamond note heads, but hey, I don't like that diamond note head. You just search for diamond and filter on the note head category. You've got your six choices for diamonds and you pick the one that suits your look um, rather than digging through an endless unsorted list of characters and going, is that a diamond? Is that supposed to be a note head? You know, or if you're a jazz composer, is that a doit or a fall or a lift? What, what is that supposed to be? Because they all have names now too, semantic names. And so it's, it's clear what you're looking at, what the intended use is. And, and um, as other people have said, if you need an obscure symbol, chances are you'll find it instead of having to go build it yourself in the shape designer. And so I think that's a really important uh, benefit. Um, so, because fonts are more flexible than shapes in general going forward for, again, if you want to leave Finale, you better have a character, not a, not a shape. So that's important. Yeah, so lots of functionality, but in a very simple, easy to use way. That, that was the goal, yep. <laughs> Great. Um, so we, we had the initial implementation of Smoofle in V27, um, and it was, you know, a lot was, was put in there, um, but are there any plans to expand the functionality? What comes, what comes next? Yeah, actually, um, there's quite a few plans, um, and, and we're working on a lot of it right now. Um, what we've set up with the with our Finale product is, um, you know, the idea of we do a, a major release, and um, you know, our customers pay for that. But then we have a series of dot releases where we continue to improve on functionality. We continue to to flesh out these things, and that's free to anybody who's already bought the 27 license. Um, so you know, all of these updates that we're working on are going to be um, coming over the next, you know, um, few months or so. Um, and, um, you know, some of the things that we'll be hitting on, um, you know, things like, for example, uh, the various plugins that we offer, um, you know, those, uh, at the moment, a lot of those are not smooth compliant or they don't pay attention to the smooth fonts. They still work with legacy fonts, but, you know, they need to be, they need to be, um, uh, improved and we're working on that right now. Um, Another issue is human playback. Um, we've got any number of possible new symbols now that can be used for, um, you know, changing the way that the, the music plays back, changing the 
the expression changing the, or the dynamics changing the style whatever and um you know we're working on being making sure that the human playback understands what the new smoothful symbols are um so that people can actually use those and get um you know their quality playback that they're used to um in addition and this is one that we've uh, you know people have asked for a lot uh which is conversion um, being able to take old documents to using legacy fonts, convert those into using Smoothful fonts. Um, and that's something that we're definitely actively, very actively working on right now. Um, the one thing too, though, um, I, I'm not sure if, if Chris mentioned this before, but um, we do still um, enable users to continue to use legacy fonts if they prefer those. Uh, they can use Smoothful fonts, but we also allow within the same document, the ability to use both legacy and smoothful fonts, which um, is, I believe, unique to Finale, that we still um, provide that. So I mean, those are all the things on the surface, the things that customers will see. Um, but as we, as we talked about before, there's a lot of work under the covers with the font technologies and that. Finale has been around, as everyone knows, for a very long time. And over that time, font technologies, operating systems, um, you know, all of these things have changed radically. Uh, you know, back in the early 80s and, and whatnot, uh, Unicode was new and computers didn't even understand what that was. Um, and now there's Unicode fonts and Smoothful fonts are Unicode. And, you know, we need to, we need to make sure that all of those sorts of things are seamless and working. And we have been adding that support as we go along. Um, but this has given us an opportunity to really dive deep into all of those core technologies um, that we've been supporting all these years and finding ways to streamline them, um, uh, coordinate them so that we get, you know, a much more uh, fluid support underneath and something that's, that's more sensible for the future. So that as we're looking for, you know, a, a new font technology comes out, you know, hey, smoothful. Here's a new spot font technology. Uh, you know, we're in a position where we can, you know, get that implemented and working in a nice clean way. Um, you know, at the end of the day, when you really think about finale, um, fonts are the core of what we do. Uh, every almost everything you see on a score is based on a font. And so the everything is built off of that. So as soon as you start going in and changing things around at the font level, you're having a large impact on the entire, on the entire system. So it, it really has been, it really has been a, a, a labor of love, if you will, um, for the three of us here on the screen. Uh, you know, Chris and I doing development and, and Greg doing astounding work. Um, keeping us honest and making sure that what we're producing is actually what people need and what it needs to look like, uh, you know, and, and doing a ton of work, you know, putting together um, default libraries and, and, uh, you know, all of these, um, all of these core components that people need and use all the time. So big shout out to Greg and Chris for all of that hard work. For sure. Um, and then what about you know, Smoothful has a, a huge, you know, co collection of characters, but are there any plans to add new characters or how are, how is that process going to go? Well, there's two, two levels of this. One is the Smoothful spec itself is a, it's an open standard that people can suggest new characters for, and they're getting added every so often. They just added a few more a few months ago. And as for our fonts, uh, we have to make a line between um, Finale Maestro, which is the most complete of the fonts. It's not everything in the spec, but it's pretty close. So the things that we're missing are pretty obscure uh, characters. And again, the ones that were just added, we didn't get those in. Um, as the other fonts, like the more handwritten fonts, are a little less complete. And Finale Ash, the one that we recently acquired and then converted, is the least complete because we couldn't you know, add to a font that is in somebody else's hand really very easily uh, at this point. But yes, I think um, as with all things Finale, we're going to base this on user input. If we hear a lot about, you know, there's, I really, really need this symbol in this font, we'll take that into account and, and uh, the fonts will be updated just like the app is updated, I imagine, because now we have this infrastructure in place to do that fairly easily. So it should be, you know, it should, it, it should, it, 
get better along with finale. Yeah. Awesome. And I think, I think what's cool about that too, is that, um, you know, I think early on when 27 came out, somebody asked me, you know, give you give your take on, on smooth one. I think I said something like, well, you know, I love the power of the shape designer. I love the power of the stem connection editor, all these powerful tools, but only when you need to, right? I mean, you want the simple things to be simple and there's a, a wealth of, uh, you know, professionally designed characters out there. And if so, if you can't find one, well, like Greg said, you know, if, if enough people want it, it it'll, it'll, the standard process is just going to make that come to fruition. But if, if not, you know, you've got the power finale, you can, you can go and design what, what you need as well. So it, it's kind of a best of both worlds. Uh. Great. Um, and then just one final question, a little bit more of a simple one, but would you say, so Smoofle being a standard, would you say a good notational equivalent of it would be just general MIDI? Yeah, I, I, when I heard this, I, I really, this one resonated with me. Maybe it's because I had, uh, you can't see it in the blur. I've got an old JV 1000 rolling keyboard here that I used to gig with. And, you know, I'd create these general MIDI files on my, my system and then bring them to that keyboard for the occasional gig that I wanted to bring those files with. And it's like, okay, that thing wasn't general MIDI patches are all over the place. And I think eventually I worked around that problem by just setting up my own general MIDI map on the keyboard. But, uh, um, it was it was kind of a free for all, right? I mean, every 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 developer, every synth manufacturer, just you know, put patches all over the place, right? And there was no interchange. So, so what General MIDI kind of did for the ninety percent of, uh, of of you know MIDI files and so on uh, is sort of what Smoothful is doing for the, the 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 wild wild west of music fonts <laughs> that we've had for so many years. So, yeah, I, I think it's a good good equivalent. Great. Um, well, that's about all we have uh, for you today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, just like the, the previous round table, if you had a question that didn't get answered or um, left in the comments of the video, we'll circle back in the next few days, make sure we cover those and answer some of your questions. Um, thanks so much, uh, Mark, Greg, and Chris for, for joining us.